So in the previous video, we learned how to solve a system of first order differential equations using matrix equations. And in this video, I'm going to show how we can reduce a higher order differential equation to a system of first order differential equations that we can solve using those matrix methods. So the first thing we're going to do here is basically, well, we want to find um, a way that we can reduce this to a first order differential equation. So what we can do is we can set up two variables. So we're going to set variable x1 equals 2x. So that's just going to be equal to the function itself. And we're going to set another variable, x2 equals to the derivative of x, which is going to be equal to the derivative of x1. So now that we have these things, we can find, OK, so what is the derivative of x2? Well, that's going to be x double dot 1. And for this case, what we're going to, because this is basically the highest order variable we can have here, basically that's the second derivative. That's the largest thing we can have in this particular equation. We're going to solve for this in the equation, and we're going to represent it as a function of the lower derivatives and the function itself. So in this case, what we're going to end up having is minus 2 gamma x dot, which is just x1, um, x1 dot. And then we're going to have minus k over m x which is equal to x1 and now obviously we want this to be more general so we're going to have x2 equals to minus la, uh, 2 times gamma x2 because x2 is equal to x dot 1 minus km over m x1 so now that we have these two equations we can actually set it up so what's x dot 1 going to equal to? Well, x dot 1 is going to equal to x2 and then x dot 2 is going to equal minus 2 lambda x2 minus k over m x1. So now that we have this, well, this is a very simple system to set up. Um, and actually, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the order of the derivatives here because I want to make this a little bit clearer uh, as to what the system is going to be. So, <coughs> we're going to have 0 plus x2 here. And then for this one, we're going to have minus k over m x1 because essentially this is 0 x1 and minus 2 gamma x2. So now that we have the variables lining up, we can set up the system in the form vector of derivatives is going to be equal to a times x. So in this case, we have x dot 1 or x dot 2 equals to the matrix A. So the matrix A is going to be 0, 1. And then at the bottom, we're going to have minus k over m minus 2 gamma times the vector of solutions x1 and x2 so this is now our system and we can solve it using the same methods that we illustrated in the previous videos but you see how just by doing this by reducing the second order differential equation to a system of first order differential equations we have transformed it into matrix form so that's a very interesting and very neat property of this method and we can use it for any order of differential equations. In fact, it should actually become a standard um, to do this for any higher order differential equations. So just to give you an example of that, um, I'm just going to erase this so I can show you. Let's get rid of this whole screen. So let's say you're given the following fourth order differential equation. And so far, we haven't really dealt with differential equations that are higher than order two. So this one is going to be an interesting example. 3, so that's the third derivative of y, minus sine t y prime plus 8y equals to t squared. 
So this is an interesting example because not only do we have this term here, which is not a constant, we also have a non-homogeneous equation because we have a function of t on the other side. So how do we go about solving this? Well, the easiest way is to represent it as a system of first-order differential equations. And because we have the highest order of this equation is 4, then that means that we're going to have a 4 by 4 matrix because we're going to have four solutions, one for each of these. And that's essentially what we're going to do. So let's do a change of variables first. Let's have x1 equal to y. Then let's have x2 equal to the first derivative. Then let's have x3 equal to the second derivative. And x4 equal to the fourth derivative sorry, the third derivative, like this. And you might wonder, what happens to y to the, uh, the fourth derivative of y? Why don't we have another variable here? Because that variable is actually be contained within x dot 4. We want a first order system, so that's going to be there. Okay, so what happens when we differentiate this? Well, x prime 1 is going to be equal to y prime, which is equal to x2. And we're going to do the same for each of these ones. So x prime 2 is going to be equal to y double prime, which is equal to x3. x prime 3 equals to y triple prime, which is equal to x4. And x prime 4 is going to be equal to y, the fourth derivative of y, which is going to be equal to what? Well, we're going to have to represent this as a function of the fourth derivative, so we're gonna move all these elements to the other side. So this is going to become t squared minus three y triple prime, which is x4, then plus sine t y prime, which is x2, minus eight y, and y is equal to x1. So this is our system of four first-order differential equations that we're going to be solving. And you notice that for the higher, the highest derivative, we always represent it as a function of all the other terms, of all the other derivatives. So how do we represent this as a matrix equation? Well, what we can do here is we need, first of all, let's reorganize this in the bottom so that we have, um, actually, I'm going to make it a little bit more explicit here. So. Our system is going to be x1 is going to be equal to 0 plus x2 plus 0 plus 0 then x prime 2 is going to be to equal to 0 plus 0 plus x3 plus 0 then x prime 3 is going to be equal to 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus x4 and finally x prime 4 is going to be equal to the following so we're going to have this so we're going to rearrange it so that we have all the terms lined up so first one is going to be minus 8 x1 plus sine t x2 then we have a 0 here minus 3x4 and then we have this term, this additional term which is going to be contained in a different vector and I'll show you why because in this case we have a non-homogeneous equation the form of the matrix equation is going to look like this so we're going to have ax so a is going to contain all these terms here and we're going to have to add to that another vector which is a function of t so that's where this t square is going to go. So if we try to add similar terms to the other equations, they're just zero because that term isn't present there. So now that we have this big system, what can we do with it? Well, we can represent it as a matrix straight away because I have lined up all the terms uh, with the ones that they need to be with. So we're going to rewrite this as, I'm just going to erase that as the system x1, x2, x3 prime, x4 prime, 
that's going to be equal to this whole matrix and the matrix is going to become 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 and then here we're going to have minus 8, sine t, minus 3 and 0 Oh, actually that should be is zero here sorry made a mistake there so sine t oh that's a very ugly t there zero and then minus three because we had that last star minus three x four so that's what it would look like so that's our matrix a now our vector of solutions is going to be x1, x2, x3, x4 plus the vector of functions of t which is going to be 0, 0, 0, t squared. So this is our a, this is our vector of solutions, this is our vector of functions of t that are not attached to x and then this is our vector of derivatives so x prime and this is basically what we have here so this might seem like a complicated example but essentially this is something that we can apply to any um, linear differential equation notice that all these equations need to be linear because we're using linear algebra here and obviously matrices cannot really handle nonlinear terms so Obviously, this only works for linear differential equations, which are what we find in practice most of the time. And then to solve this, you can use methods similar to what we have been using so far to find an analytic solution. But in most cases, you will find that there's no analytic solution to the differential equation. So what you have to do is you have to employ a numerical method. And in the future, we're going to discuss some simple numerical methods that you can use which actually make use of this decomposition of the higher order differential equation into a system of first order differential equations. But for now, I am just going to leave this here just so that you know that it is possible to reduce this four order differential equation into a system of four ordinary first order differential equations.